So welcome or welcome back to my channel. One of the first videos I created in 2021 was about me getting out of my own way and just uploading videos that I enjoy making, editing, filming, all that good jazz. And I also spoke about how there were a couple of videos last year that I made, finished, even made thumbnails for and never uploaded. So this, my friends, is one of those videos. I hope you enjoy. <laughs> So good morning y'all. Today is Friday, October 2nd and I am going to be taking a little mini vacation to New York City. I live in upstate New York so New York City is about five hours. I typically like to do something for my birthday but since quarantine we can't really do too much but we are able to travel within our state. So let's go to New York City guys. So if you've never been to New York before, our leaves on our trees change colors in the fall before they fall off and it is absolutely beautiful. New York City travel hack number one. The first thing I do is stay in North Bergen, and I do that for a couple of different reasons. The first reason being parking in New York City is a pain in the tush, and finding a hotel that has parking is also a pain in the tush. And if you do find one, you're probably going to pay about $35 a day. So when you go to North Bergen, New Jersey, most of the hotels have a bus that stops right in front of the hotel. The hotel that I usually stay at is the Super 8. It's nothing fancy, it's nothing to write home to mama about, but it's somewhere to rest my head at night and it's clean. So the bus there usually comes every half an hour on the hour. It is $3.50. It brings you to Times Square. When you're done exploring the city, you catch that bus in Times Square again and it brings you right down the street from the hotel. Therefore, for $3.50, you do not have to worry about driving in New York City, nor do you have to worry about trying to find parking in New York City. So that, my friends, is why I stay in North Bergen. And the hotel prices are fairly cheap compared to staying in the city. Welcome to New York City. So nobody really had an idea of what we wanted to do. We did kind of know that we wanted to go to Chinatown to see if we could find any deals, but we didn't necessarily know how we wanted to get there and we all just really wanted to sightsee, so it didn't matter how we got there. We all did have Google Maps on our phone and it allows you to see where you are, so we didn't mind getting lost in the sights of New York City. About to leave. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for. And as you can see, when you walk around New York, you see all kinds of cool stuff. We've seen this group of musicians playing and people dancing, yet keeping their distance. And it was a beautiful sight to see. So by the time we actually made it to Chinatown, everything was closed. So we grabbed some food and made our way back to downtown to catch the bus to go back to our hotel for the night. 
but by this time we were absolutely exhausted so we got on the nearest subway entrance talked to the gentleman who was giving out the tickets he told us what subway to get on to bring us back to the Times Square area that we needed to be at so here is my tip number two when in Rome do as the Romans. In New York City, most people travel via subway or they walk. This subway ride back to our hotel room was $2.75 per person. If we were to have Ubered it, it probably would have been about $20 to $30. So the one thing I really wanted to do that I have yet to do, even though I've been to New York City a couple of times, was go to see the Statue of Liberty. So at our hotel, they had these handy dandy maps of New York City. We grabbed one and we were on our merry way. So we could not walk from where the bus drops us off to the Statue of Liberty, so we hopped on the subway. So the one and only time we got lost, I did it. Well, not really lost. I took us too far on the subway. But it was an easy fix and we made it to the Statue of Liberty. Just an FYI, getting to the Statue of Liberty is easy, but going through TSA like bag checks is a pain in the butt. I forgot to take my camera batteries out. Actually, I forgot they were in the bag and literally they searched my bag and acted like I was creating a crime. But they went through my bag and realized it was just my camera battery. I felt stupid and it was really scary. So just be mindful. It is very much like a TSA bag check. So the tickets that you purchase for the Statue of Liberty are $19.25. And it also includes Ellis Island. So you're $19.25 includes the Statue of Liberty and Ellis Island and the ferries that will take you from the city to the Statue of Liberty and then from the Statue of Liberty to Ellis Island and then back to the city. So that $19.25 is not a bad deal whatsoever. So you get on the ferry and it takes you to the Statue of Liberty and let me just tell you the view on this was completely worth the $19.25 itself. I personally think it is one of the most gorgeous views of the city that you can get. So the ferry ride itself is only a couple of minutes and I highly recommend you sitting on the top because you see everything. It is so pretty. So once you arrive at the Statue of Liberty, you get off of the ferry and there is a ton to do. There are restaurants which are extremely high priced, may I say, but I understand. So there are restaurants that you can go to on the Statue of Liberty or within the Statue of Liberty. There is a gift shop. There's tons of stuff to see. There is a museum that you can walk through and it kind of shows you how they molded the Statue of Liberty. Um, you could not at this time go to the top of the Statue of Liberty or even go inside of the Statue of Liberty due to COVID, but it's still something that I would highly recommend you seeing if you have the chance to go to New York City. So because I'm a horrible planner and very new to vlogging, I had no idea that going to Ellis Island would be part of this for free, so I did not plan on it. But we did go for about a half an hour and I have absolutely no footage of it. I was just taking everything in. Our next thing that we really wanted to do was make it back to Chinatown. I don't know what it was with us with Chinatown, but we really wanted to make it back to Chinatown. So we hopped on the ferry and went back to the city to go to Chinatown. So in Chinatown, I ended up buying this designer dupe, and I will not say the name, but you can read it on here. Um, yeah, I bought this whole set, the book bag and the wallet, for $35. The book bag for $25, the wallet for $10. You can haggle prices in the city, and I would highly recommend that you haggle the prices if you're buying a dupe in Chinatown but I also recommend you going there and buying your souvenirs because they're hella cheaper than they would be if you were to buy souvenirs at a souvenir shop in Manhattan and then we went back to the hotel room and got ready to leave 
That, my friends, is the end of my New York City two-day little mini vacation for my birthday. I am not the greatest at vlogging. I realized some mistakes, and I will try and get better. So if this video was at all entertaining, if it helped you with some budgeting when it comes to New York City travel, please give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for other cheap life hacks such as couponing and couponing deals. And I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye.